Hindu with us. Kamar Aga, senior journalist and a keen observer of uh, the situation in uh, Pakistan is also with us. I welcome you all to Newsnight. Let me begin with you, Lieutenant General Raghavan. According to the government of India, there are over 500 Indian prisoners lodged in Pakistani jails and around 275 Pakistani prisoners lodged in Indian jails. As tension rises between the two countries, should their welfare be lost sight of? They have not been lost sight of. They, they are in jails for specific reasons, for specific charges. Uh, on specific sentences that have been put, granted to them. And I think both countries can rightfully claim that they are following the legal process. Uh, length of imprisonment is no ground for humanitarian considerations. This is what they will say. But there is no doubt that there is a huge war. Or they have completed their jail sentence already and it is time that they are repatriated. Do you think both sides need to keep this as a very important CBM in mind for each other? Uh, I don't know where these figures have come from and I'm, uh, I'm sure they are overstated. But as uh, General Raghavan has said and I appreciate it for bringing logic and sanity back into this debate, uh, it is a condition of not only Indian, Pakistani jails, but Afghan jails, Chinese jails, all these jails, overcrowded, overflowing, and they don't even do justice to their countrymen. Forget about doing justice to countrymen of other, uh, other countries. And it may be time that each of the governments really took the dust off committees that have been formed to suggest judicial reforms, police reforms, and did something about it. So there is a wider need to really become more humane overall, not just in the context of 500 people there and 300 people here. What about the tens of thousands of Indians who are imprisoned in, in the jails? Most of, the, most of them cannot afford a legal counsel, mm -hmm. so they languish as under trials. Mr. Rang, I'll bring you in now. The government of India today has recommended and has proposed to Pakistan that uh, there be a review of the measures which are in place presently to ensure the safety and security of Indian prisoners in Pakistani jails and vice versa. Is it high time that both countries sit down across the table and not just decide to improve the security but also ensure the better implementation and letter and spirit? I think it's a high time. You're right. Absolutely right. There is a need, you know. We don't know how many people are they have already completed their, their, their report in India, which has just come out just a few, some time back, you know, has come out. And in Pakistan, they are at the moment, you know, they are trying to find out how many people are there. Some data has already come up, you know, reports have already uh, published in the newspapers, you know, yesterday. If you look at the, 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 the prisoners who are languishing in jail in Pakistan, most of them are innocent. A large majority of them are fishermen, you know. They don't know where it, Pakistani water starts, where, where Indian uh, water ends, you know. They just... United States. Yes. So, uh, you know, that is why they are limited benefits for U.S. They could get back Raymond Davis because they would talk sweetly to Pakistan. In fact, after the Osama bin Laden thing, John Kerry went over and he spoke with General Kiani for hours and hours to convince him. Here the relations between India and Pakistan, they have been stalled since September. They deteriorated after the beheading of the Indian soldier and there has been virtually no contact. So when there's no contact, plus this has been compounded with another major problem, that the government today, there is a caretaker government. There's a caretaker prime minister, who's also the foreign minister. There's a caretaker chief minister of Punjab, she does not uh, seem unwilling to take actions on issues that have a resonance on Pakistani national security. What do you think is the way out? Uh, I'll come to you, Mr. Raga. What do you think is the way out, Lieutenant General Raghavan? We know the power uh, structure within uh, Pakistan it comes to the mutual benefit of both countries of ensuring that uh, there is safety and security of... I call for me of accusations that are going on on both sides. And I think, therefore, claims that we should withdraw our ambassador from there and break up yeah, our relations, etc., are completely, completely wrong. The thing that is required now is to go back to normalcy through established processes of both diplomatic and civil society and back channel coming. Six to eight months, you know, by that time it will settle down. And third thing, next one year or two years, Pakistan would be too occupied with Afghanistan rather than would be interested in having negotiation with India. So that is a situation we have to understand. 
I believe, you know, I personally feel, you know, in this next one year, relations with Pakistan continue to slide down. I don't see much chances of it. Be about uh, the welfare of Indian soldiers in Pakistan and Pakistan soldiers in India. Perhaps one of the important CBMs for both the countries could be to ensure that at least basic civility and human dignity is maintained. And for that, we need some imaginative solutions, many believe. We'll soon have a break now, but you can catch all the latest news from the world of politics, sports, and business at DD News Twitter handle. It is DD News Live Round the Clock. We'll be back in just two minutes. Please don't go anywhere. you're watching news night is a recap of the headlines sarabjit singh cremated with full state honors in his village vicky wind in punjab for the karnataka polls is which is set to take place on sunday has come to an end political parties have used their full might to woo the state's voters a largely four cornered contest is expected and stakes are pretty much high for all political parties but they are perhaps the highest for the bjp many believe because the defeat will mean it loses its low bastion south of the vindhyas Campaigning for the team has assured that all security arrangements are in place for the election on Sunday. Police. President uh, joins us from Belgao in Karnataka. Phillips, does it largely look like a four cornered contest? And what are the main issues uh, dominating the campaign? What's the big picture looking like? Well, uh, Munmun, the big picture is that uh, it is a four cornered contest at least in certain sections of, uh, of the state, for example in the northern and the southern parts of the state, it has to be said uh, that it is a four-cornered contest because, you know, the JDS is uh, largely prevalent in the southern parts of the state while uh, the, the Karnataka Janata Party has its base in the northern districts. But it must be said that in the rest of the state, it is a fight essentially between the BJP and the Congress, the principal national parties. And that it will, in a sense, decide uh, the future of uh, Karnataka. The fight between these two parties will, in a sense, decide the future of the state. All right, Philip, uh, thanks so much for that update from Karnataka going to polls on Sunday. Work has continued in both houses of parliament today. Opposition MPs raised slogans over the coal blocks allocation issue. Opposition members trooped to the well in both houses of Chinese incursion in Parliament today. Later, a delegation of NDA MPs met President Pranam Mukherjee to express concern over the intrusion. Discussion on RBI's monetary policy. It has cut the repo rate uh, today. We want to very gratefully thank our viewers for making Newsnight the number one news show in the country. According to Tom Ratings, Newsnight has beaten our nearest competitor by a huge margin. These are the latest figures on your screen, which stand testimony to our commitment to present news in all its dimensions, in-depth and accurate. On to our second top focus tonight. RBI has a cut repo rate by 25 basis points. However, in a setback to corporate expectations, it kept the CRR unchanged. Monetary policy of reserve. Has the government got that message? Are you, what are you doing on those fronts? Uh, there's a lot of things that's been happening, as you know, over the last, uh, I would say, since August or July last year. There's been a spate of reforms. Uh, it is a debatable issue, in, in a sense, because uh, 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 the production, the actual production of uh, grains uh, has been quite good. And, uh, and part of it, you see it in, in, in food grade stocks being very high. So there's a bit of a puzzle there as to why we have high food prices at a time.